Hey everyone, welcome to yet another Frontend News Podcast. Today is 12th episode and it's gonna be epic. Epic, because we have a bunch of great news. It's like 7, 8, I'm not even sure. But first thing first, Tomasz, how was your week? Uh, thank, thank you for uh, asking. My week was perfect, my life is beautiful, nothing to complain about. And how about your life? <laughs> my life is even more beautiful because we are going straight the agenda. <laughs> Great, okay. Guys, so for the first news, uh, something big, and I want to speak about React 18 release. Wait, wait, React 18? Uh, yeah, React 18. Guys, if you want to build something in React 18, it's just definitely, we're gonna do it for you. Visit our website, visit our contact forms. We are here, ready to answer your questions. And the website is like frontendhouse.com, am I correct? It is. Great, so you know what to do, but uh, moving forward, the second thing I want to speak about is uh, our lovely Stack Overflow and it has been sold. I don't know if you heard that. What? Okay, I mean, wow, I'm even surprised. Uh, I haven't seen that news. Uh, I know the so price. I, to, to I know the it. price. <laughs> oh, 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 read it for later. <laughs> but yeah, uh, what's the uh, third the, news, Chris? The third news is about Aurora project. Uh, the fourth one is about web extensions community group. The next one is gonna about Safari and its better release. Sixth one, but not the last, because we have seventh news, is about Strapi and its fourth version. And the last one, Tomasz will show you how to measure your CPU directly in your browser. Are you excited? I am. Let's watch the intro. So let's sit down to business. Tomasz, what's in React 18? Okay guys, uh, I'm really excited that uh, I can speak about the new major release for the React, which is the 18th version. Just to explain something, we do not have the fully working React 18 available now, but what we have is the alpha version of this library. So if you are interested in checking out the new features, Probably it will be something for you to test and to play with. But uh, what we get in the newest React... Yeah, I'm super curious. What's in? Uh, I won't speak about everything because this is still uh, being developed. So uh, we do not have the final uh, list of the new features, improvements and fixes. But what I'm really excited about and is really interesting is that we've got a lot of improvements around uh, server-side rendering and the suspense mode. Uh, we heard about suspenses in React, so in the 18th version it has been optimized and it has completely new architecture for handling the server-side rendering. The next thing is the batching uh, mechanism has been improved. So imagine that you create the handle click function and inside this function you are changing the two states. For example, counter and let's say the username. because. Be just because, <laughs> okay? So you've got two set states in a single function. Nowadays, it will mean that we will re-render our component two times. The first one for the first state change and the second one for the second state change, all right? So right now the batching has been improved and if we uh, use two state updates inside the single function, um, the component will wait until both of them will be executed. Sounds cool. good? Sounds great. Next thing uh, that I'm really curious about is the new APIs, which the one is really interesting. I mean, all will be interesting, but I want to speak about this single one. It's about the start transition. So, simple example. I believe you create a lot of search inputs in your life. Of course I did. Stupid question. I know, you know, uh, debounce uh, or uh, throttle functions that has been used to trigger the necessary updates, not each exactly. See. timeout. Exactly. The start transition API will be something that will handle this case. So you won't need anything like debounce or throttling. You can put inside the body of the start transition function the things that has to occur uh, after, for example, the input state will change. But if you want to track uh, all the changes, the React team has created something that's called a working group. And that's it's a group that 
the, the main purpose is to share the newest ideas and uh, newest improvements from the React 18 to the community and to exchange the information, to give the feedback about these new features. So thanks to the working group, you can track all the changes, all the improvements and give your feedback to the React team. And yeah, that's it from the React 18 world. That sounds amazing. So it's uh, alpha version. Uh, do we have any estimation when they're gonna release? Yeah. So after the alpha version, it's it has been said that it's a like few months uh, until we receive a beta release. And after beta release, it's like few few weeks to receive the, the final production version. Okay, so we are still waiting. Yeah, we need to still wait, but what is interesting, yeah, just just a, a small explanation over that, small detail, and all the changes that has been put into the newest version of the React won't break the currently existing code. So it supports the previous versions of the React. Uh, all the improvements are out of the box. You do not have to update your code. That's good news, but let's update anyway. But what is even more interesting for me is it or not? Or how much they sold the Stack Overflow? <laughs> yeah, of course I do. <laughs> okay, guys, the big news. Stack Overflow has been sold and the price is $1.8 billion. Solid. Solid amount of money. Who bought it, Tomasz? Process company and they are one of the biggest tech companies in the world. Uh, believe me or not, but they cooperate with a lot of uh, famous names like uh, Brainly, Code Academy, OLX, uh, PayU, Remitly, or even Udemy, and they are behind those communities groups. The process company support you know the initiatives that are connected with uh, the community with creating. Uh, the technology that is open sourced or just to share the knowledge over the community and make the IT world, the tech world, better day by day. Sounds interesting. Uh, curious, what does it mean for Stack Overflow? We will see in following months, I guess. Yeah, exactly. We need to track the changes. So, what's next in your, on your plate? Next thing is the Aurora project. I know, guys, today there is a lot of information about different communities, but come on. Uh, we cannot speak only about the releases. Am I right, Chris? Of course. As always, Tomasz. I, l I love when you answer in such a way. <laughs> okay, guys. So the Aurora project is the collaboration between the Chrome team that works on the browser and different web frameworks and tools, creators, authors. Okay. They create this collaboration because, um, you know, they want to standardize few things around how the tool has been used. and. When I say tools, I mean all the tools. It's like Vue, React, uh, Angular, or whatever you're using. So this collaboration should, um, I would say, elevate our daily work and the quality of the functionalities. And what I mean, okay. So they present a scheme of how they want to process the updates and the changes propositions. So starting from the beginning, they want to identify the future together, what will be really useful for all the developers and users. The second thing is the research and develop phase, where they are working on the solution. Third thing is to validate this feature in the production app. So this is like QA and checking out if it works well. The fourth step is to enable this feature in a production app and get the feedback from the users to do more QA. And once the feature will be approved by the users and by the QA, it will be used by default by all the frameworks and tools that are, you know, in this collaboration. So it's like the community will put more from themselves to actually impact on the browser's world and on the tooling world. Doesn't sound amazing? It is, and I'm very surprised how you prepared to this news. I mean, I have no further questions. Well done, Tomasz. Thank you. Thank you. I hope our lovely guests will also uh, appreciate this news and check by themselves what's about in the Aurora project. Probably we have some collaborators in our lovely audience. So guys, good job. Exactly. That's it, Tomasz? Yep. So web extension community group. Exactly. Another community group that has appeared. It's really nice that we put a lot of effort nowadays to collaborate with each other. Sharing knowledge and experience in the community is really important also for us. So if you have any questions or you're interested in collaboration or you have some suggestions 
please don't hesitate and visit our website frontendhouse.com and use the contact form or you can leave a comment under YouTube video. Guys, let's get in touch. Exactly. After this beautiful advertisement, uh, I want to <laughs> Yeah, I'm still about curious about this group. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Me too. Me too. I want really. I want to share uh, this news with you, uh, Chris, and obviously with our audience. So yeah, web extensions community group is something that um, has been created. I mean, the beginning, the foundations has been put by different companies, well-known companies like Apple, Google, Microsoft, or even Mozilla. So they have initiated this community group, but uh, it has been dedicated for all of the developers and people that are around the front-end technologies to work on some propositions for the web extensions. Maybe not to create a standards that will be widely used, but uh, to work on some solutions and features around web extensions and to make them work on the different platforms. This community group will work on making this web extension closer to the developer and make it easier to work with okay so uh, it's worth the track they work and yeah looking forward to see what will be the outcome of their work and that's it okay sounds good it's great to see big brands uh, collaborating each other uh, to make the internet better so f keep my fingers crossed safari 15 better release go ahead Tomasz. oh man a lot of improvements in the beta release whoa finally I won't speak about all of them because the list is really huge and I really encourage you to check it on yourself. But a few things that will be updated in the Safari 15. So they redesigned the Safari user interface uh, for Mac OS 12 and iOS and iPad uh, OS, along with tab grouping functionality and customization over syncing uh, in the browser. More features about syncing uh, on different devices. They also added support for the verification code to the iCloud Keychain Password Manager, add the technology preview of passkeys in iCloud Keychain, and a lot of stuff in the CSS, HTML, JavaScript, web extension, web APIs, inspector, and many, many more. I just don't want to speak about because it's too big. But yeah, it sounds like a lot of things has been changed. Uh, so it's worth to check the beta release. It's still beta, so remember, not everything uh, probably will work as expected, but hey guys, we are here to test it and give our feedback to the creators of the Safari. Nice one. Uh, I'm curious what's, uh, what are the updates for JavaScript and web APIs. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna check myself. The other one that I'm very looking forward is Strapi version 4. We use Strapi for most of our projects. So Strapi get a lot of popularity and uh, this year will also be really positive for Strapi. Uh, the fourth version is uh, really close and there is a lot of improvements. Again, a lot of improvements, changes, update fixes, you know, all of kind of that stuff. But the Strapi team decided to optimize a lot of things and simplify the GraphQL and the REST API has become more flexible and, you know, easier to be used and uh, extend. And it's more consistent, so you will probably find the necessary details in the documentation. It will be the breaking change, so it will work a little bit differently than the previous versions of the Strapi, so it's worth to check. If you write the new plugins for the Strapi, uh, the, the API for that will be also improved, so it will be even easier to write new plugins and add them to your Strapi. And the database layer has been improved too, so probably there will be a better connection uh, between the, um, the application and the database itself. The updates, yeah, what's more, just check the release notes because they are putting more and more to the Strapi 4 and I'm really waiting for, for the new release and I'm gonna use it a lot. <laughs> yeah, you're right. We are gonna use it a lot uh, in upcoming projects. Um, it's always pretty solid choice. So the last one? The last one? It's gonna be about measure and boys loves measurements. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know nothing. I have no information. <laughs> you can't share any that data, right? Uh, yeah, but I want to share something today. Go ahead. And it won't be uh, live measurements. I just want to do a short sneak peek of the code, how easily 
we can use the experimental API to check the CPU usage in our browser, okay? I mean, it won't be the CPU usage by our browser, but the overall usage of our CPU. And let me share my screen. Um, so you should be able to see my screen. Cool. So we have got an experimental API uh, to measure the CPU usage. And yeah, there is a, some theory uh, that is put in here, but uh, the most interesting part is how easily with small amount of code, we can react on the CPU usage. And uh, believe me or not, but this is the, all the code that is required to track your CPU usage. So as you can see, the new API experimental is named the Compute Pressure Observer. So this is the observer that uh, will react on the different thresholds that we are, can set up in here. We can react on CPU utilization or CPU speed three thresholds. And as you can see, we can trigger observation and here we can unobserve and the callback function we just react on different states so if we point the cpu utilization and cpu speed we can react on them in the if else statement block and do whatever we want with this information but uh, thanks to that we can for example ut utilize our application uh, let's say we have the video call application and somehow it consumes a lot of resources and if we want, for example, to display the information that the connection may probably be lost because you don't have CPU. This, I know, this is maybe dummy example, but you know what I mean. Thomas, so this this is very, I mean, this is very amazing news because uh, there is a lot of like CPU extensive applications we built, like 3D, uh, that kind of stuff. And uh, like previously, we had to detect like frame rate or something to like downscale experience but wow with this uh, cpu measurement we could pick up like uh, low quality assets for like, when there is like no cpu for for this uh, experience so uh, it's very good news and wow uh, yeah exactly to make our li life uh, easier for sure hopefully it won't be a experimental feature in the future and it will become just a normal default feature in our process nice one Guys. Thanks, man. Nice one. And that's everything from my side. What a pity, but we will see each other next week and week after the week and forever, right? Hopefully. Yeah, finger crossed for that. But apart from seeing ourselves uh, on the YouTube channel, guys, we are also recruiting. We need a lot of senior, regular, junior, front-end developers, back-end developers. Just check our website, check our offers. We are here waiting for you. Yeah, if you want to drink a coffee with me and Chris, just take a look at our website frontendhouse.com and yeah, join our lovely team. Yes, indeed. Guys, see you in our office and see you on the YouTube channel. And Tomasz, thanks for this episode. Thank you, Chris. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, guys. <laughs> see you. Hi. Ciao.